after quite a bit of feedback uh, about our surfacing videos, uh, I decided to put together a follow-up for that surfacing video to kind of explain a few things uh, dealing with SolidWorks and advanced surfacing. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go in and we're going to do another uh, part here. And the um, question has been raised about four edges uh, in SolidWorks parts or in SolidWorks surfacing. So uh, let's just take a look on the front plane. Now, in the past, what I've always done is used a spline when dealing with that. But some people have said, well, what happens if we need to have a little bit more control over our geometry? So in this case, I'm just going to draw a quick little sample of uh, a part using arcs and uh, lines. And we'll just, we'll just stop at that. Just something quick. And I'm going to go in and put some dimensions on this. Um, let's, uh, let's do a uh, center line here first to have a, something that we can revolve around. And also something to dimension to. Uh, so let's say 5.5. .5. Put a couple of dimensions in here really quick to have something to control with. Okay, so we've got something that was something like that. Let's uh, let's finish this thing up. Um, So there we have a fully defined sketch. And at this point, notice that we left a line here, or a space here. Now this works best whenever you're doing lofts and sweeps or revolves uh, in surfacing. But at this point, we're gonna go through and do our surface and we're gonna do a revolve surface. I'm just gonna do it 180 degrees. And you can see there that I pretty much got our surface down pat. And at here, if we decided that we wanted to do any kind of free forming, we couldn't do that, or we could do it, but it would be a matter of uh, picking which section or which uh, area that we would do it in. For instance, if I wanted to do freeforming here, I could just do it at the top, uh, for in, and then here as well. Uh, so you see here the concept of the four edges. You've got to have the top, the bottom, the left, and the right edges in order to do freeforming uh, in here. So if we decide that we don't want to do freeforming on each section like this, what can we do to go about fixing this? Well, if we go back into this sketch and edit it, uh, I can go in and select this whole sketch and let's turn it into construction geometry. And I'm going to go into uh, my tools and spline tools and tell it to fit the spline. Now I'm going to un make sure delete geometry is unchecked and make sure close spline is unchecked. And I'm just going to select these entities that I was using to create my model with. And I'm going to click OK to accept. So what SOLIDWORKS has done is it's actually taking a uh, spline and put over the constraints or over the entities that I'd used to make the shape to begin with. I can then click OK. I now have a smooth surface there that will allow me, uh, if I decide to go into freeform, allow me to select the whole face. I can then go in and add curves to this face. Let's just go into the middle here and add points. I can select these points here. Click OK. And then I can go in and pick these points. And I can manipulate them accordingly to give myself the shape that I'm looking for.
So you get more of a shape there that you're looking for. Click OK to accept. Uh, you see now that I have more of a shape. However, I can still go in and manipulate what I've got here. For instance, I can double click that six at the top, change that to seven, and do a rebuild on it. And you see that that changes. I can go in and change the, uh, the uh, height of this from two to 2.5 and do a rebuild and you see that it automatically adjusts but the thing is is that it will keep the shape uh, the freeform shape that I applied to it uh, even though I'm making changes to the overall geometry and of course once we get to that point uh, then we can go in and do a, um, a mirror use our fly out feature select our front plane bodies to mirror of course is this one and we're going to go ahead and tell it to uh, merge these solids together. Click OK to accept. We now have a, a nice little bell, if you would. Um, now, what do you say we happen to this ball at the bottom here? Well, we just simply go back into our surfaces and tell it that we want to do a, uh, a fill surface on these two edges. And we don't want to optimize the surface. We'll just click OK to accept it. Now we no longer have that hole at the bottom. It's now filled in completely. Uh, I do have three surface bodies. I can go in and uh, actually select all three of those and go and knit those surfaces together and merge those entities. Now you see I just have one body. And then we can go in and thicken this body. We're going to thicken it on the inside. And uh, let's just tell it that we want it to be the opposite way and click OK to accept. And then we have our thickened body there in the shape that we need it to be. Just uh, wanted to answer some of the questions that we've been getting as far as the uh, surface loft is concerned. Uh, this really helps you in the long run uh, dealing with uh, real geometry and being able to go in and make changes to your geometry even though you're dealing with surfaces and free form um, changes in uh, in your geometry. So I hope this helps and I hope it's answered some of the questions that have arisen uh, and uh, thanks for the comments and you guys keep those comments coming in and we'll see what uh, um, see if we can't get those questions answered. Thanks again.